Welcome back to cost management. This week we will be discussing pricing decisions. Topic one is on costing and pricing in the short run. There are numerous ways to set prices for products and services. However, we will be looking at three main types here. Target pricing, where a price that is based on what customers are willing to pay. Cost plus pricing, a flat markup percentage is added to the product's full cost. And life cycle pricing, where a form of pricing in which all costs, including environmental costs of production and recycling, reuse of materials, may be considered. Pricing is a number of is a function of a number of factors and is likely informed by customers' desires, competitors' products and services, as well as the company's costs and cost structure. Short run pricing refers to pricing decisions on a time horizon of less than one year. Pricing special orders and determining optimum product mix are typically short run pricing decisions. Short run pricing stands in contrast to long run pricing decisions that have a time horizon of greater than one year. These long run pricing decisions typically contain more analysis and are for products and markets where there is more quote wiggle room in pricing. So meaning the market is not commoditized. In the context of short run pricing, many costs are considered not relevant. Consider the case of a short run pricing decision for a special order. For a special order, the most relevant costs would be those required to immediately fulfill the order, that is, the variable costs. Costs that are fixed for more than a year, such as underlying product development costs, administrative costs, etc., are not relevant because we cannot you know, choose to get rid of them in the short run. We're really looking for that incremental benefit. Short run pricing decisions should be made within the context of the company's business strategy. As with other forms of analysis, the qualitative considerations will be an important in the decision making process. For example, short run pricing decisions might consider prices required to undercut competitors and prices required to differentiate quality. You also want to make sure that your pricing decisions for short run don't impact your own pricing decisions for the long run. Let me give you an example. So back when I lived in Calgary, there was this place, Sumo, uh, that it was a restaurant and they sold, oh goodness, uh, rather, um, you know, middle of the road, uh, being generous, sushi. And uh, they had a pricing, uh, for, there was like full price sushi, they were in a mall, uh, they were full restaurant, but they were in a mall. And they, so they tended to have a lot of business kind of, um, you know, around lunch hours. So say a uh, sushi lunch was like $16 or $20 or something like that. Uh, at four o'clock, all of their sushi went half price. So <laughs> even though this was a place, it was away from all like the, uh, the dinner places. Um, yeah, Monday through Thursday, uh, all of their sushi became half price at 4 p.m. So what did I do if I wanted lunch and I wanted it from Sumo? I would wait until 4 p.m. I would just eat a later lunch. So <laughs> while they Sumo may have thought, hey, and maybe they did some analysis, uh, you know, we tend to throw out a lot of stuff at 4 p.m. We hardly ever sell anything afterwards, so something is better than nothing. Uh, what they didn't realize is that they were actually shifting some consumer behavior. I'm sure I'm not the only person <laughs> that was shifting my behavior. So you really have to make sure that you are considering your strategy in the short run uh, in addition to, you know, your own strategy, perhaps in the long run, in addition to, you know, what this short run pricing strategy might do. Uh, another example is Lay's potato chips. So everybody knows of Pringles and Pringles, they are amazing. They are the chips that don't crumble. They come in their own little, like, I don't know, canister. So what did Lay's do when they came up with their own canister chips? Well, they priced it a little bit cheaper than the Pringles and they put them, they made sure to get kind of some shelf space uh, right beside the Pringles. So they were doing it to undercut their competitors. So what did people do? 
they were like, oh, I will try this Lay's potato chips. And they did because it was slightly cheaper. And then um, what Lay's was hoping is that people would fall in love with these, you know, fancy Lay's chips to differentiate from the non-fancy Lay's chips in the bags, just sitting a couple, couple shelves over. Um, but then what happened when Lay's decided to put their canister chips um, back to the full price, they went, people, customers went back to the Pringles because customers ended up being confused. Why would I spend expensive prices on Lay's when you can get cheaper Lay's in the bag kind of next door. Pringles are Pringles are Pringles. They are a premium product. And you know that when you're buying Pringles, you're getting the perfect chips in the can and without confusing the customers. So making sure when we're looking at these pricing strategies, we're considering um, the question at hand and we are really trying to understand what is going on here and kind of assess both the short term, long term, whatever kind of implications are specific within the question, as well as your qualitative uh, points of view here. Okay. Question. You are the controller of a small private corporation. The company is introducing a new product and the CEO approaches you about pricing of this new product and explains that she wants to be conservative about the pricing. To begin, she would like to simply ensure that all costs are covered and a small margin is achieved. You would recommend that she adopt which of the pricing strategy? Is it A, cost plus pricing, B, target pricing, C, strategic pricing, or C, lifestyle, life cycle pricing? The answer is A, cost plus pricing. This is the type of pricing that considers the full cost of an item and then applies a markup. So since the CEO wants to be conservative and wants to achieve a small margin, they would take the cost plus a small margin to get to the pricing of this product. All right, fabulous. We're gonna dig into each one of these types of pricing uh, in future subsequent videos. That is cost plus pricing, target pricing, and life cycle pricing. Uh, these are all a part of being strategic decisions. Uh, so this question here is really just to see your intuition as to these pricing strategies, but not to worry, we'll dive deeply into each one of these in a subsequent video. Thank you so much and I'll see you there.